Hey there, Valeria here from Chase and Paper, and today I'm going to show you um, how to make quick and easy um, ink daubers. Now we all use them. Let me show you what I mean. We never have enough of these, right? These are daubers, and they come in a pack. Usually there's like two of these with a bunch of little felt circles. But what happens is um, we always wind up having a lot more ink colors than, you know, these little daubers. And it becomes cumbersome to change the felt piece on them and then we start to cross-pollinate. <laughs> Just dabbing it in whichever one um, we need to use. So I'm going to show you a quick and simple solution on how to get a bunch of this made. They do sell them on Amazon, I believe um, a pack of 12 for $33, right? Now that's like way too much in my opinion because we can just make them ourselves. We can just make a quick and simple project. And actually I'm about to show you three ways, three ways to make your own. Some of them is probably supplies you already have at home. Let's get right on it. Let me move this aside. Now you probably already have this because you can buy this very inexpensively. See, this one still has a price tag from Hobby Lobby and it says $4.99. Of course, we know Hobby Lobby always has sales. So I probably bought it at 40% off. So there you go. Um, you could do the same. <laughs> uh, step number one, it's pretty much a two-step project right here. This is the most simple way to make more daubers. Well, take a look in your sewing supplies you may be lucky enough to have some wooden spool. If you don't have them, ask your parents, ask your friends, your sister, your brother. Somebody is bound to have these. Now, what you're looking for is the wooden spool. If you don't have them at home, they might have them at the thrift shop, but I, I believe you probably have them if you look. <laughs> okay, so this is the simplest way. Now, I picked up this little velcro fasteners at the dollar store this came from dollar tree so what we're going to do before we glue in anything or attaching anything you are going to want to find um a spool that matches the diameter of your felt closely enough it doesn't have to be exact so it looks like like that this one is a nearly perfect match as you can see right it just covers the sides so this is really good, but let's say you didn't have this one. I wouldn't recommend going with something bigger because you really don't want the wooden ends to get in your way of your inking. Not that it would be a tragedy, but it just makes things simpler and easier if your felt circle is the same size or a little larger than um, your surface of your wooden spool. So you probably don't want to use the big one. Now, if you have the small ones, you could work with that as well, right? And the easiest way to fix it is either just use it as is, or what you can do is um, you can just plop it right down on your circle and just mark it really quick, right? Just so you know what diameter you need. There you go. And then you can just quickly make it smaller yep you just cut it to size no rocket science easy anyone can do it we're just cutting it down to size there you go now all of a sudden your circle is magically the same size as your spool Ta -da! so what you're going to want to do next is take one of our velcro pieces and these actually uh, um, come with adhesive in the back already so you just want to take the the part that has like a little prickly things on top okay that's the, the side we need you stick it nope don't stick it there <laughs> we stick it to our wooden spool right on top That's it. It's attached. It's good to go. It's good to use. As you can see, I left the thread 
um, right on the spool just for the sake of saving time in this video you could get the thread off of it or you can actually keep it if you're keeping it just make sure to secure the end maybe you want to use a dot of glue or something like that okay so that's it that's um just a simple project number one use a wooden spool okay next let me show you I picked up this old box of chairs at the thrift shop a couple of weeks ago and um, I thought it looked great I really like the box and um, you can tell it's old but unfortunately it was missing pieces and some of them are kind of broken like these are plastic pieces and look at this one it's kind of bent but there is a lot of good usable pieces here so why don't we make some fancy ink daubers out of them right let's do that now uh, important note here before you even try doing that if you're working with a vintage item whether it's chess set or a book or really anything else you might want to research it first so this chess set i have already researched it and um I do know that it actually comes from 1945 and it's a pretty rare set but um, mine is unfortunately not in a good condition as you can see the box is split it's stained and um, some of my figures are missing and some of them clearly have been replaced here there's more melted ones and um, just in generally it's not in a great condition but had it been in a good condition in excellent condition this box of chess sells for about sixty dollars currently on mercari okay so always do your research before you're gonna go ahead and do something to a vintage item just because you paid a dollar or two for it at the thrift shop or a yard sale it doesn't mean that's all it's worth so we want to make sure we don't destroy <laughs> a priceless treasure or a sixty dollar uh, chess game all right so as i said i already researched that one so that's the first thing I did. Um, secondly, I did taste it for Bakelite. If this happened to be Bakelite, they would be valuable even though um, they are missing some pieces. <laughs> I just want to reiterate, it's very important to know what you're working with. Now, I'm looking at these figures and um, I'm going to compare the bottoms of the figures to our felt circles, right? And just by comparing, I see that looks like the king is going to be a perfect fit. Look at that. We don't need to trim anything. It's just going to be perfect. So I'm going to pull out my kings, put them aside. We should have at least two if we're lucky. There you go. A black one and a white one. Now let's see. How about the queen? Oh, well, queen is just a little bit smaller so there's a little bit of a um, hangover on the sides there it doesn't bother me if it bothers you please proceed to trim it just like we did in the first project so i'm also going to pull out the queens um let's see what else is the same diameter well um yeah we can we can pull a few more pieces here but i think you get the idea and by the way i am going to use the rest of this for different projects so stay tuned uh, there are new videos coming out i'll show you what we can do with the rest of this because i don't like to waste stuff these are good usable pieces and the chess box i just think it's so pretty with this little knight on his horse i might actually use it for a book cover in one of the next videos but let's move on let's attach our felt to our chest pieces. I am pulling out my Velcro circle. One, two, three, and four. okay that's about it now all you have to do is get your felt circles 
and attach them to the ends. Aim for the middle. This one is perfect. Done. Nice. Next. Very nice. Next. Very cool. And next one. Done. There you go. They look, by the way, much better than Tim Holtz ones. And you made them yourself. And they really have character. Okay, you can take it to the next level and actually um, add a little tag to it. Maybe I'll address the tags in the next video. Okay, but let me move on and show you one more way to make your own daubers. Okay, let's just say you don't have um, any cool vintage chairs. That's okay. Do you have a dollar store near you? This is what I found in my local Dollar Tree recently. Right, so it's a little um, mo car model. Okay, so these are four pieces that I'm interested in. We could probably find the way to use the rest in some other project because I like reusing everything. <laughs> All right, but let's put it aside for now. So we wound up with four little pieces, right? Right here. And we will want to attach some kind of handles to them. Well, what can we use as handles, you ask? Well, hold on, I'll show you. Ta-da! Lo and behold. <laughs> so I purchased this little pack in Michaels, I believe. So this is a, these are called finial caps by, by Plaid. And so what they are, they are finials. They're basically little wooden finials. So let's open the pack. By the way, it's also, it's very inexpensive. I think it was like maybe $3 or something in that general area. And you get eight pieces here. So let's see. These come in two sizes. You get four larger ones and four smaller ones. You really can use both. It makes no difference. So what we basically are going to do is um, we're going to attach these two pieces. And I'm going to use um, Elmer's wood glue. By the way, this model car pack comes with a bottle of glue. So if you don't have Elmer's wood glue, you don't have to buy it. If you bought this little piece right here, you already have your wood glue, okay? I'm just going to work with Elmer's because that's the one I know and trust. Um, but it, honestly, this one probably just as good. It's, you know, it's a wood glue. <laughs> I'm going to brush this side because as you can see, there's a hollow part in the middle. So I'm just going to go around it as neatly as I can and I'm going to aim for the middle of the of our little uh, car wheel. And there you go. When it dries, it's not going anywhere. It's literally going to be stronger than wood. Let me just wipe down my excess glue. Even though it dries clear, I just like the neat look. There, this one is good and we're just going to leave it alone to dry. Meanwhile, we're just going to move on and proceed with the rest of the wheels. All right, just covering them with glue. As you can see, it's just like really easy. Nothing special, but the results are awesome because now all of a sudden you have enough daubers for all your ink pads and you no longer have to cross pollinate. You can just use a special dauber for, for each ink, all right? Here you go. That's number two. Yep, they come together quickly. Look at that. That dries fast because like it already feels nice and solid. I mean, I wouldn't try to pull it apart, but you know what I mean. It's not going to take long to dry at all. Look how cute these are. And I actually like this for the tiny little um, pads. Let's see. 
Next. Yeah, what fun is it to buy a whole pack of them on Amazon for $33 when you can make your own for just a couple of bucks, right? For like, what, $4 or $5 or so? Let's see. Yep, this one's done. Couple more wheels. This one actually already attached. Um, a piece of velcro too because i wanted to make sure it sticks it does stick oh by the way if you wanted to make sure that this like lasts forever which i don't really care because i can always reattach a new velcro piece but anyway um you could just use a like industrial type stapler and staple the piece of velcro on top instead of just relying on your adhesive but i think it's going to be just fine without that all right continuing with the glue i hope i'm still on screen there we go there's the glue right in the middle you get a few seconds to reposition it like this one i was aiming for the center but it didn't work out <laughs> on the first try so what i'm saying is with this type of glue you have a couple of seconds to like <laughs> for your second chance aim <laughs> all right next all the hard work is pretty much done at this point okay and again we're looking for uh, for the pieces of velcro with the tiny little hooks okay the prickly little ones not the soft ones but the prickly ones that's the ones we need <laughs> we're looking for those all right aiming for the center here we go here we go here we go and that's it let's attach the velcro to each one another circle another one and two more two more and a one and a two and we are all done we got some homemade wooden ones we have some really unique chess pieces and we have um an old wooden spool one let's try it out and see how it works let me grab a piece of ephemera that we can ink by the way, this is one of my many ephemera holders. And if you are interested, I can show you next time um, what exactly I did here <laughs> and how I'm using it. How about her? Here we go. And I hope my camera is focusing. It's like I said, look at that. Works like magic. The king is doing his job. Just quick motions outward like that. Ta-da! As you can see, the chess pieces are definitely doing their job. Let's try our wooden ones here, the ones that we made with the little knobs. Okay. Let me ink it. Um, let me grab another piece. There you go. It works great. See what I mean? The felt felt circle is a little bit larger than the diameter of um, our wooden piece here, but it doesn't matter because it works just as fine. So we tried this one out and it works. Here's the spool. We're going to try the spool as well.
and of course the spool is working just as good so there you go that's our simple little project i showed you three ways to make your own ink dabbers let me know if you liked it and please 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 subscribe to my channel for more fun videos and hit that like button give me thumbs up thank you guys see you next time